Welcome to Stay Brainy, Stay Curious. In this video, we will go over fundamental formulas that will enable you to calculate the areas and perimeters of the most commonly encountered 2D shapes. Once you become familiar with these formulas, you'll have the ability to tackle the majority of geometry problems with ease. Square To calculate the perimeter of a square, you simply add all sides together. Since all sides of the square are of equal length, we can simply write it as 4 times A, A representing the length of one side of the square. To calculate the area of the square, we must multiply the base and the height together. Since the base and the height of a square are equivalent, we can write the formula as A times A, which is essentially A squared. Rectangle a rectangle has two pairs of equal sides. Therefore, to find the perimeter of a rectangle, the formula will be A plus B plus A plus B. That equals 2A plus 2B, and if we simplify it further, we'll get 2 times A plus B in parentheses. To find the area of a rectangle, we have to multiply the base by the height. In this case, our base is B and our height is A. This will yield the formula for the area as A times B. Triangle Calculating the perimeter of a triangle continues to be as simple as adding the lengths of all sides together. The basic formula is A plus B plus C, assuming that all sides are of different lengths. Of course, if you have an isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle, you substitute accordingly. As long as you are adding up all sides together, you will get the perimeter of that triangle. To calculate the area of a triangle, it's a little more complicated compared to the square and the rectangle. One method of calculating the area of a triangle is to multiply the base by the height and then divide that product by 2. Effectively, this can also be written as 1 half times base times height. The question is, why do we need to divide base times height by 2? If you understand the reasoning behind it, it will be much easier for you to remember this formula. You see, the area of a triangle is simply half the area of a rectangle of the same base. Since a rectangle is a quadrilateral, all the angles are right angles. The diagonal of a rectangle cuts it in exactly two equal halves. That means that the two smaller green triangles that make up the green rectangle are exactly the same, meaning their areas are also equivalent. The same can be said about the other side of our main triangle, with the blue rectangle cut into two smaller blue triangles. Now, we know that the area of the big rectangle, the green and the blue put together, whose base is B and height is H, is B times H. Therefore, the area of our triangle is half of that, since it only consists of half of the green area and half of the blue area. Parallelogram A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that is made up of two pairs of parallel sides. In a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. To find the perimeter of a parallelogram, we follow our basic formula of adding the lengths of all sides together. This formula will be exactly the same as the formula for a rectangle, since a rectangle itself is a parallelogram. In fact, the formula for the area of the parallelogram is exactly the same as that of a rectangle as well. So to find the area of a parallelogram, we simply multiply the base by the height. You might be asking, why so simple? Well, let's break it down so you can visualize it better. Look what happens if we extend the base to meet the height outside the parallelogram. Ensuring that the height falls exactly at 90 degrees on the base, these two blue triangles are exactly the same because all of their angles are the same. Therefore, if we just rearrange the blue triangle that's inside the parallelogram and shift it outside, we will have formed a rectangle whose base is B and whose height is H. Hence, the formula for the area of a parallelogram is base times height. 
A kite shape is a quadrilateral in which two pairs of adjacent sides are of equal length. It has two diagonals that always intersect each other at 90 degree angles. A kite is symmetrical about its longer diagonal. The shorter diagonal divides the kite into two isosceles triangles. The formula for the perimeter of a kite is again the same as that of a rectangle, so 2 times A plus B in parentheses. To calculate the area of a kite, however, you're going to need the length of its diagonals. The formula using the diagonals is 1 half times first diagonal times second diagonal. And it's pretty easy to see why. If you remember our explanation about how the area of a triangle is calculated, you'll quickly see how the area of a kite is calculated as well. For ease of imagination, let's draw the borders of a rectangle whose sides are the lengths of the kite's diagonals. Do you see it? Now, the area of this rectangle would be D1 times D2. And if you look at each little rectangle formed on the inside, you'll see that the area taken up by the kite is exactly half of the big rectangle. Pretty cool, right? Trapezoid Again, the perimeter is calculated by adding the lengths of all sides together, so A plus B plus C plus D. As for the area of a trapezoid, the formula for the area reads 1 half times A plus B in parentheses times H. Does this look familiar to you? We've seen a similar formula before. That's right, the area of a triangle. If we break down this formula, we'll get 1 half times A times H plus 1 half times B times H. This is essentially the area of two triangles added together. The area of the green triangle is 1 half times B times H. And the area of the blue triangle is 1 half times A times H. Do you see it? Let's flip the image so you can see it better. Therefore, the area of the trapezoid is equal to the area of the green triangle plus the area of the blue triangle. That's why the formula for the area of a trapezoid is 1 half times A plus B in parentheses times H. A regular polygon A regular polygon refers to a polygon consisting of n number of equal sides. The n is a variable and could represent any number. To calculate the perimeter of a regular polygon, we must multiply the length of its side by the amount of sides it has. So if n is 6, that's a hexagon, then its perimeter would be 6 times a. To calculate the area of a regular polygon, we multiply the amount of sides the polygon in question has, that's our n, by 1 half times the length of the side, so a, times h, which in this case is not really the height, but rather the apothem of the polygon. An apothem is a line from the center of a regular polygon to the midpoint of one of its sides, hitting it at exactly 90 degrees. The reason why we use the letter h is to help you understand why this is the formula for the area of a regular polygon. You see, if we split any regular polygon into equal triangles, you'll notice that the total area of the polygon is simply the area of one triangle multiplied by the total amount of triangles. We used letter H in this case to signify the height of each little triangle, whose area is calculated by multiplying one half by the base, that's A, by the height, that's H. That's why the formula for the area of a regular polygon is n times 1 half times a times h. Finally, the circle. In this case, you kind of just have to memorize the formulas. The circumference is calculated by multiplying 2 by pi by r, so 2 pi r, and the area is pi r squared. Now, I'll give you a little hint that will help you distinguish the two and remember which formula is for the circumference and which is for the area. Knowing that the units for 2D shapes are always squared, all you have to remember is that the formula with the square, which is pi r squared, is the formula for calculating the area. That's all for today! If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and share so your friends can gain some wisdom as well. 
I hope you learned something new. I hope you had fun, and I hope you always stay brainy. See you next time.